In recent years, many probation departments across the nation have seen a rise in youth with mental health issues. To help provide the proper care for these young people, agencies had to adjust their system of care or face increasing gaps in services and an increase in violent or suicidal incidents. With the help of the Healthy Returns Initiative grant from the California Endowment, the Santa Clara County Probation and Mental Health Departments have partnered to fill these service gaps to provide proper care and necessary programs for these youth. With an average daily population of 283 in Juvenile Hall, they had seen a spike in suicidal and violent incidents before HRI. The number of youth needing one-on-one -on -one supervision for suicidal ideation had increased to levels never before seen. The number of violent incidents had risen, but it was caused by a group of juveniles with high-risk mental health needs. These youth required intensive staff supervision and repeated trips to the hospital setting. When they received the HRI grant, it helped them ease these issues through a variety of strategies. They were able to provide multidisciplinary team meetings, or MDTs, provide mental health training for custody staff, enhance the services in the transition assessment unit, and enhance the aftercare and transition services in juvenile hall and the ranches. The MDTs bring together all partners that are involved with an HRI youth. Mental health staff, probation officers, parents, guardians, school staff, medical staff, custody staff, service providers, and the minor. They formulate a care plan of services and set clear expectations of behavior. It also provides the communication and collaboration between agencies. Mental health staff provides training for custody staff in eight modules of mental health issues. Some of the training areas include suicide prevention, common psychiatric disorders seen in childhood and adolescence, crisis diffusing, and implications of psychotropic medications. These training areas are designed to build staff skills in dealing with youth and provide possible behavior treatments. The classes are STC certified and probation staff are receiving training credit from the state. The Transition Assessment Unit is designed to promote the welfare of youth in Juvenile Hall who have mental health or special education needs. It provides short-term intervention, healthy coping skills, and social skills training to help stabilize minors. Probation and mental health staff work in collaboration to provide a therapeutic environment to prepare the young people for successful placement or transition back into the community. The goals of the transition program is for the most part to uh, identify uh, young men that have mental health issues and for the most part just to bring them into a, a certain environment that can help stabilize them. Uh, we make sure that they've been able to accomplish their, their goals for the short-term goals or the long-term goals for that day and then start focusing on uh, you know for the days to come. Um, again the, the, the key part of the, the transition unit is to help these young individuals uh, go and, and adjust from, from this particular environment onto uh, their, their placements or anywhere else that they're going to be uh, sent out to. Without the transition unit, it's already a tough enough to be inside the institution itself. Uh, and then if an individual's in here with, uh, with the mental health problems, um, again, problems at home, problems with everything, it would be, I'm saying, pretty much 10 times worse for them. I mean, because these are going to be the individuals that are going to be disciplined more, they're going to be in the rooms longer, there's potentially going to be more fights, more suicide attempts. So it's incredibly important to continue on having a, 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 this type of program itself. Without this, um, the success is going to be pretty difficult, you know, because they are facing already an uphill battle, but without the particular program itself, um, it's even going to be worse. They do have some additional problems, and let's continue to help them out to, uh, to, to help them reach their full potential. We have two case studies that illustrate just how important these services are. The youth's names are Alex and Melina. Alex was physically abused by his father and now exhibits violence to his mother and siblings. He's been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, oppositional defiant disorder, and has been hospitalized for depression. He doesn't do well in school and he's been in and out of placement due to his mood swings and increasing violent behavior. He's been housed in the Transition Assessment Unit. When I first came to Juno Hall, I was really depressed this time around. Um, it had been my second time coming and there was lots of issues at home. Um, I was being, this time around I was really suicidal, unlike the other times I've been to the hall. Um, lots of things both at home and in the hall and personal stuff was going on. I gradually started to get a lot better. Um, it was much easier when I had mental health staff there, like pretty much on call all the time. 
Before I came to Rebecca's, I really didn't want to come and I didn't want to go to Gilroy High School. But now that I'm here, I'm kind of realizing the benefits of it. And they're really trying to get me into more stuff like my acting and my choir. In the future, I really hope to move down to Southern California. I want to study music or acting, one of the two. Without the mental health unit, I probably would have stayed in juvenile hall to finish up my maximum of six months. But if I knew that if I did do that, I wouldn't have anywhere to go afterward. I wouldn't have a group home. I wouldn't have anything really to go to. My mom wouldn't allow me to come back home yet um, because she wants me us to deal with our issues. And that's what's going on here at Rebecca's. Me and my mom are trying to build a better relationship with each other. And so without the mental health unit, I probably would be homeless. Melina's history is one of great sadness. Her father was murdered in a gang fight, and her mother has a history of drug abuse. Melina is bulimic and a self-mutilator who attempted suicide twice. When she came to HRI, she was very violent and made suicidal gestures repeatedly. She was assigned one-on-one -on -one supervision and was a behavior problem during her stay. She was facing possible placement at a high-level out-of-state residential program because of her volatile behavior and mental health needs. She was immediately provided a variety of services through the HRI grant. The last time I was in juvenile hall um, was recently. The last time I was there, that's when I actually learned a lot. Like all the other times, I was just going in and out like it was a thing to do. I was bad, real bad. I didn't care about nothing and I was just doing whatever I wanted to do. And I, and I had no respect for nobody, not even the staff there. And, I was depressed. I, I was suicidal. Um, I was I had a lot of anger in me. At first I started seeing mental health and from mental health they got me a psychiatrist and then that's when the psychiatrist put me on, diagnosed me whatever and put me on medication. I, was, I wasn't perfect. I still like slipped and did what I was doing but I, turned, I got better though. I learned. Oh the MDT is helping me with the law. Like when they decided to put me on 101 like, I was out of control, but like afterwards, I told them, I know I'm not gonna hurt myself or I, I know I'm not gonna mess up because I make my own choices. If I didn't have mental health services, then, oh yeah, I don't know where I'd be. I wouldn't be out, I know that. I know my behavior would have not changed because I would have not did all the, half the stuff I did to cope with my problems. I wanna move back to San Jose and then go to San Jose State and then um, I don't know what I want to become yet, still thinking, but I'm going to, I want to go to San Jose State though. By the end of the first year of the HRI grant, with its MDTs, its training and its other components, we have seen a 90% reduction in minors needing to be psychiatrically hospitalized. We started off with an average of 26 minors per week being on a watch sheet a five-minute watch or a 15-minute watch. Currently, that's down to five minors per week. HRI has been a great success for us within the hall. Not only have we met all the goals of our grant, we've exceeded the goals of our grant. We've seen minors in placement. We've seen minors succeed in the community. Those that used to come through a revolving door are now able to get the appropriate services to help them go home, help them reunify, or to be placed in a therapeutic environment. Since HRI's implementation in 2006, Juvenile Hall has seen a huge reduction in incidents. Violent incidents have dropped by 49%, mental health-related incidents have dropped 78%, and one-on-one -on -one suicide watches have dropped 90%. On average, 138 youth are receiving mental health services in Juvenile Hall and the ranches. They have conducted over 365 MDTs, and over 200 custody staff have received mental health training. The services HRI provides have affected the lives of countless troubled individuals in a positive and uplifting way. And it is only through continued support that they can realize their mission.